coming in, man. And uh, 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 he'll introduce himself and we'll go from there. But I, I, I just think it's important that we have a well-rounded conversation as it pertains to this. You know, I mean, we've had uh, uh, members of the Nation of Islam on and we've had scholars that's done uh, work on the Nation of Islam. And it's no need me repeating how I feel about the Nation of Islam and what I believe. And uh, but Malachi, I heard. Hey, good evening, Malachi. I appreciate you coming on. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir, brother. Um, well, well, brother Fred, man, I really appreciate you inviting me on. If I sound kind of a little low, can you hear me? Yeah, we hear you. We hear you great. Yeah, I just had a you know, just had a, a rough day, you, you know, you know, with the move and everything. So, you know oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I, I, I heard you on Punch's platform, and um, and I was like, oh, this is interesting. I, I think you'll be a great asset to the conversation we've been having on this platform for about a year now you know i mean it's just ongoing about the nation of islam and um malcolm x elijah muhammad minister farrakhan and and the list goes on and on you can we can work on down the street if we like but uh i was very compelled by your story man 24 years in the nation of islam yes sir 24 and a half years to be exact um you know my background give everybody a little backdrop on me um, you know, I'm Coach Malachi Williams. Um, you know, I was born born in uh, Tampa, Florida, and I ended up. Uh, you know, my my, my grandfather's from uh, Harlem, New Harlem, Harlem, New York, and so my grandfather he joined the Nation of Islam in 1955. You know what I mean? So that's that was my minister, uh, and that's who trained and taught me. Um, I know, you know, I met brothers like uh, Minister uh, Rahman Muhammad, um, which used to be the regional minister from the First Resurrection. Uh, Brother B.R. down in Miami, B.R. Muhammad, Brother Musain down in Miami, uh, you know, Captain Anthony, which was the, uh, at that time, this was the the early 90s, like 90, 91. Captain Anthony was the captain in Miami, um, out of the mosque in Miami. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Brother Jabril, a.k.a. Bernard Kushmir out of Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, Bernard. Talked about our brother, too. Um, let's see, who else? Uh uh, L5, which Captain Curtis, uh, he was a part of the NOI security team for, for Minister Farrakhan. Um, also, um, Brother Van was over the, uh, the southern region at the time um, in Atlanta and stuff like that, over the southern region. So, yeah, I know I know a lot of brothers. Um, like, literally, I was taught, trained by a lot of the brothers in the First Resurrection. So, How old were you when you joined the Nation of Islam and why? Uh, I was about 17. Um, my background was, uh, you know, my mom was a Black Panther. <laughs> my mother was born in 1944. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so the, um, you know, the Black nationalism was already in me uh, from her. Um, you know, I had a lot of hatred and anger in my heart, you know, for for white people, of course, from what I was taught. Um, my mother's experiences in life put much, you know, kind of like drove me to that in any ways, you know what I mean? Because she told me a lot of stories. And, you know, my grandfather, Kareem, he was, uh, you know, Minister Abdul Kareem Muhammad, rest in peace. Um, he was, uh, you know, he, he was in the nation since 1955. So, you know, that was my background in that. And then, um, you know, because of my mother was a Panther and I had all of this, you know, young, you know, uh, I got fished in, <laughs> you know, the nation this long, they bring a new fruit in, they call them all uh, fishing. Mm -hmm. So we, I got fished in and, um, I was just prime, you know, I was, I was, I was ready to go, ready to go, man. And, um, then once my grandfather got a hold of me and then a lot of those other brothers got a hold of me, it was a wrap. Mm -hmm. Now, what's uh, when you join the nation on what's like some of the, the training that you have to go through? DB's explained it, but he always assumed that I know. So <laughs> and he'll, he'll call in and add to the conversation anytime he feels like it. But go ahead. Yes, sir. So when I first came into the nation of Islam, you know, uh, you know, uh, I went to I was I, I came out. Of, let me give everybody a little context. I came out of Moss 47, Moss 47. So uh, Moss 47 was between it was kind of like Tampa and St. Petersburg area. Right. The Bay Area. Um, um, you know, my training pretty much was like, um, you know, you, you, you go, you go to the FOI meetings, stuff like that. When I first went to the mosque after they finished teaching and, you know, hyping everybody up, they ask you, Hey, you know, uh, you know, if you believe everything that you heard today, uh, please stand up. If you like to join or help, help us. And they get your phone number and stuff like that. And, and then, uh, brothers are getting in contact with you, but you know, my grandfather was already in, he was the minister. So that was, that was just a no brainer for me. Um, that was it. Then, um, you know, I used to go to the study groups and stuff. My grandfather used to teach me at the table. Um, at that time, at that time, uh, 
brothers will tell you that uh uh, those older brothers will tell you that man if you if you find a brother from the first resurrection who came up under under the honorable Elijah muhammad this is how it was brought to me that's willing to teach you at his home that's truly a blessing you know what i mean so i got taught right there from the horse's mouth not only inside the mosque but at my uh grandfather's table and then um once he started the mosque in in, uh, in saint petersburg because it was in tampa Sure. They ended up. They ended up sending another minister in name by, by the minister uh, by the name of uh, James Muhammad. He came from Harlem as well. Excuse me, brother. <coughs> he came from Harlem as well, and um, you know, so it was like a, a rift between two men, two ministers in the nation. Mm-hmm. You know, w- w- my grandfather had moved to St. Pete, then you know, James is in Tampa, and then I, we I ended up going to Miami later on down the line. But um, yeah, I was just I was taught a lot of different things, brother, about the first resurrection, what attracted me to the nation. Cause I was a street guy and all of the guys I came, you know, all of the guys I grew up around was from the street. So, you know, but I, I had wanted a better life for myself, to be honest with you. So when I came in the nation, you know, I thought I was kind of like getting away from that stuff, to be honest with you, you know, but a lot of the brothers within the nation was in the street like me. <laughs> so <laughs> I jumped out of the pot right into the frying pan. You know what I mean? That's a lot of, that's a street element to the nation that's small that if a brother who's not familiar with it, don't know about that's real. You know, mm-hmm. so that so I ended up being attracted to that uh, that the bad element of it. To be honest with you, more so than anything. What do you consider like the bad element? Um, the bad element is, uh, you know, uh, you know, brother, we got to make sacrifices, brother. You know, like once you get indoctrinated in the nation, um, you know, with the teachings of uh, uh, Minister Farrakhan and a lot of those old first res- a lot of those old like the uh, the first. The first resurrection brothers, mm-hmm. they did they they did a lot of stuff, man. They put in a lot of work, man. Like uh, you know, it, it, it that's no secret. If you, you do any research or study, a lot of those brothers was it was criminals, you know what I mean? They did a lot of you know high caliber crimes from uh robberies and murders and stuff like that. Um a street brother is always attracted to that that gangster element, you know what I mean? Um they don't teach you that when you first come in, like the average person who's on the outside looking in. You see the bow ties and the bean pies and stuff like that, and we righteous brothers and this and that. And there are some good righteous brothers in the nation who's really, really trying. Because I know some right now today. I have some real good friends in the nation right now today. It's just that, um, you know, there's an element, a street element um, with brothers out there that's, uh, you know, they, they, they're they going to get it. They're going to get it how they live. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you know that's what we did, to be honest with you. Truth be told, I, I can't really get too much in detail, but Brothers who in the nation who come from that first resurrection era, who was around in like the late eighties, early nineties, all throughout the nineties, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Mm. And w- w- when you're at the mosque, so you got to sell uh, the, the FOI. What exactly is the 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 definition and the meaning of like the FOI? You know, the fruit of Islam. So basically, the FOI, the so FOI is pretty much like the you know, we're the military branch of the of the nation. You know what I mean? We're the guys who do, do the soldiering. We're gonna sell the papers. You know, I was um I was a lieutenant. You know what I mean? My grandfather made me a lieutenant. Um, my captain was an old guy by the name of Captain Samuel Muhammad. He's from New York. He did twelve years in Attica Prison back in the day. Um, he trained me, but he was real real old. And um, so we ended up getting a new man, a new captain, which was a good friend of mine. Um, uh, he was you know he was a real heavy strong like dope boy in the game out there in the street. And um, he ended up being the captain because he had money. <laughs> and the nation of Islam, if you got money, you get favoritism in the nation. You know, you get posts and positions. This brother here, uh, he was very, very ambitious. So once he was made a captain in the nation by my grandfather, uh, I, uh, Minister, Kareem, uh, Minister Abdul Kareem Muhammad, um, guys, put a name to it. Um, then he made me a lieutenant. And so I'm like, man, uh, you know, the nation of Islam is this is how naive I was. I said, man, the nation of Islam is, is righteous, man. I, you know, the nation of Islam, they they hate drug dealers and this and that. And brother, I'm out here doing wrong. I can't be coming in here playing with this stuff. We're trying to be righteous and clean up. And you know, then my grandfather just went to teaching me, hey, brother, you know, uh, you know, uh, Allah know your hit, you know, Allah know your intentions. You know what I mean? As long as you got good intentions, brother, it's okay to do A, B, C, and D. Um, a lot of the older cats in the first resurrection, they won't say that publicly, but this this is what they teach. You know what I mean? Uh this is what they this is what they teach, you know what I mean? So um that pretty much was it. Then once once uh 
we were still doing the same thing we was doing prior to the nation, bro. To be honest with you, <laughs> I'm just being honest. You know, so. And when you're an FOI member, what are you, your actual duties? So you got to sell. How many papers were you responsible for? And like, uh, like go ahead. no, what's the the like? How many papers do you have to sell? What's the financial responsibilities? And how much do you believe goes to the mosque? How much goes to Chicago? How much goes to you? Well, all the money go to put them. All the money go to Chicago. Like back then, you sell newspapers. Uh, you know, you sell it for a dollar. Let okay, I give you an example. Like they may they may say okay, they may say brother uh, brother Malachi, we're gonna give you a thousand papers. You know what I mean? By me being a lieutenant, I had a lot of like my first officer was up under me, and a lot of just the regular fruit was up under me, right? So the captain, you know, I report to my captain, which was on uh, Keith Muhammad, and then he reports to the minister, which is my grandfather. And that's how they had it structured. I'll put them much every mosque was one of my setup like that. You had the assistant minister and stuff as well. But um, you know, you get a thousand papers, uh, you sell a paper for a dollar, you keep 30 cent, and 70 cent goes goes to Chicago. So you turn it into your, you know, we may turn it into um to the to our local mosque, which is my grandfather, mosque 47, and then our money is supposed to go up to Chicago. So um that's that's pretty much what the program, you know, back then you just sell newspapers. Uh, you know, you may sell some bean pies, incense, whatever. Um, that's it. There was no uh business teachings, you know what I mean? Like economics class, you know, we were soldiers, we fruit, you know what I mean? You know, the white man's the devil, you know. Uh, you know, this is pre million man march time and stuff like that. And me being a lieutenant, I had like I'm what I meant to tell you, uh, Fred, I'm gonna send you some pictures, mm -hmm. I'm gonna send you some pictures so you can physically see. You know, yeah. with the suits on and stuff like that. I'm seeing the pictures so you can see who put, put faces to these names. I'm telling you, sure. sure. Um, I'm gonna send that to you. So, um, yeah. So, um, I had I had like 25 brothers up under me at the time, and you know, mm -hmm. lieutenant is. You know, I was very militant at that time, very very militant, and a lot of us were. So uh, we had to get out there and sell those papers, and when we didn't meet the paper quota, we had to buy the papers pretty much. You know what I mean? And let's say you got a thousand papers, you don't sell all the papers like you're supposed to sell them. Or for whatever reason may be, when you're soldiering, you'd be out there on the corner selling the final call newspaper. And you may go into the inner city like the projects and go door to door and, and try to sell the papers like that. Um, you know, but if you didn't meet, re reach that quarter, you know, you, that money still had to go to Chicago. So whatever was short, brother, you, you know, you had to come out of pocket to pay for it. That's what you had to do, period. Mm. So, so so if it was a, a thousand papers, it was a thousand dollars. No, it, it was it was seven hundred dollars because. Um, oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The brother, because the brother, how we make money is if we sell if we sell a thousand paper, we keep three hundred and seven and seven hundred goes to uh, go to Chicago. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was a kid between Harlem and, and L.A., what I saw a lot of Nation of Islam members that did a lot of security. Like I would see them uh, do a lot of security. I would see them actually like on TV and stuff doing, a, especially like from. Was it Michael Jackson and stuff like that? They was doing yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're right. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Uh-huh. Were you like a part of that, or did you know if that was a part of it? And how does that tie in like to the um the, the FOI and all that? Um no, so I wasn't a part of that. I was I wasn't that high up on the totem pole. <laughs> yeah. You know, those those brothers who get those kind of like in the 90s too, right? Like the late 80s, early 90s, the the FOI, the nation Islam used to get um, government contracts. Uh-huh. I don't know if you know this. You know, oh, just, to get, just to get government contracts uh -huh. um, to secure, you know, to do security in the inner cities, housing projects and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, that those contracts eventually got pulled. But, um, yeah, they used to get government contracts. So if you were, if you were able to land a big fish like a Michael Jackson or let's say if you was a celebrity, uh, Fred, uh, let me close the door for my kids. Yeah. And they're making all this damn noise. And they, they, need, they need to be in bed. Um Anyways, if you was like a big celebrity or something, uh, Fred, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And we was able to land that um, land that contract with you somehow because the FOI does do good security. Mm -hmm. I, I will say that now. I mean, the top crew, those guys do, do really, really, really good security. You know what I mean? Like they really, really pay attention to detail and stuff like that. You know, so um, but I wasn't out high on the totem pole, to be honest with you. You know, I did security for um, stuff like uh, I was one of the brothers who helped do, help secure Dr. Collett. When he, whenever he came into the city of Miami or anywhere throughout the state of Florida, you'll find brothers that anytime there's a high official in the nation that will come in, you know, all the fruit to have to rally, if you can, 
to come do security for the brother. So we did do security for Dr. Collett. I sat down and had a conversation with Dr. Collett in his hotel room in Sarasota for Juneteenth festivals. This was back in 93, 94, somewhere up in there. Mm-hmm. Um, 93, 1993 to be exact. You know, so that's how that worked. But I never did security for a celebrity, brother, mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Uh, you uh, t- said y- you had conversations with Khalid Muhammad. That's pretty interesting. Care to elaborate? How, yes, old, sir, were you at the, how old were you at the time, too? Oh, man, that's crazy. Uh, I was uh, 19. <laughs> I was 19. Oh. I was a teenager. So uh, uh, I got an interesting story about uh, Dr. Khalid Muhammad. I'll never forget. Oh. Dr. Khalid had two sides of him. When he comes in, right, he would, uh, like, if he come into a city, he, he, Dr. Collar was like a real, if anybody know this story, they'll, they'll know. Dr. Collar was a real ladies man. Mm-hmm. He, you know, like when he talked to women and he, you know, he was so sweet and so passive and yada, 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 yada. We like, wait a minute, you know, this, when we see Collar teach, you know, Collar is this jet black brother who was like, um, uh, Huey P. Newton slash Nat Turner slash, he was. Mm-hmm tell your head off you know what i mean in debates and stuff like that i thought you know a lot of the young brothers was attracted to college because he was he reminded of us more of the physical angry side and stuff like that i, I just i just i can say me like the guys who came in the nation around my time we was really we really really loved college we really loved college you know what i mean but um the conversations i had with college was um you know i was just talking to him he told me that he, he said you how long you been in the nation brother i told him and uh, he asked me who how i got introduced to islam um and I told him uh, my grandfather who he was. He said, oh, okay, okay, your grandfather from New York, Harlem, okay. I said, yeah. Um, he told me that, uh, you know, what, well, brother, uh, you know, asked me, did I love the teachings? I told him, yes, yes, sir. i do anything for the teachings, uh, anything to push this program to help Minister Farrakhan. He said, okay, brother. It, 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 was, it wasn't a long, long conversation. It wasn't nothing too detailed, but I remember those things. And um, he gave me some pointers about when I'm doing security for him what he expects, you know, how to flank him, um, what to look out for, keep my head on the swivel, stuff like that. Um, and just, you know, just little, just things like that. That's all. No, no that's pretty dope. You had a chance to actually have a comment. I wish I could have had a chance to have a conversation with Malcolm, but that's pretty dope. That you, I, And even Khalid, because I have friends uh, now that, that knew Khalid uh, uh, Muhammad and they tell me stories, you know what I mean? About, uh, and I, um, about your point, like like he 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 was real smooth. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, yeah, hey, 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 Fred, Fred, yeah, listen, yeah. Fred, uh-huh. I, I'm yeah. gonna tell you this is a true story. We uh-huh. we we are in Sarasota. This 1993. Uh-huh. Um, the Muslims were strong. What the, the members of the Nation of Islam were strong at that time. Around that time, the Nation of Islam was strong as hell. Um, they was deep mosque everywhere, pretty much. Um. It's, it's nowhere like it, the way it is today is, you know, it, it fell off tremendously. But mm-hmm. back then, um, they were strong. So Khalid, it was his sister. She was she was a Christian. It was his sister. She was a dark-skinned woman. She was beautiful, though. Mm-hmm. Khalid talked to her. He said uh, a brother got killed by the police in, uh, in Sarasota, right? A week before Juneteenth. In Sarasota back then, they used to have the Juneteenth festivals. Mm-hmm. Khalid came in. Um, I got to tell you this. This is what I got to tell you. Uh, I want to give. I don't want to get out of line. When you want to bring a high-ranking official in, in the nation of Islam, um, the local mosque would we would put money together and say, "Hey, man, we want to bring Khalid in to come speak." Mm-hmm. Or if you want to bring Minister Farrakhan in, they'll tell you what they fee is. This is what we charge, or whatever whatever the case may be, and they'll come in and speak. You got to pay them the money, of course. So Khalid sometimes used to have money, have trouble getting all of his money. So Khalid came into Sarasota. I'm going to wrap it up. I ain't going to be too long. He came into Sarasota. He met this sister, talked to the police chief. Um, he asked him, you know, could you please just come out to the to the speaking engagement? I would love to have you. I mean, I'm like, I'm looking at Khalid. We looking at Khalid like, damn, is this the same dude? You know what I mean? <laughs> he was so sweet and passive. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. He, he, was, he, was, he was very charming. Uh-huh. When they came out the next day, they saw a whole nother Khalid. Uh-huh. And this goddamn no good peck of wood, you know, the cracker, and yada, 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 yada. You know how Carly talk. Said it, said said such. You sat there, and it was a black, I think it was a black police chief or something. He said, and what type of uh, uh, nigga you is, 
I don't know if he said nigga, I don't want to lie like that, but he said something of the, of the sort uh, to allow something like this to happen to one of our brothers. And you got the audacity to show up here today and, and call it ripped them. He invited them to come out. They, he was so passive and sweet. But then when they got there, it, he, it was like they saw a total different person and right. he ripped them. That, and, and, and when it, and, 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 and in the NOI, when, when, when a high-ranking official was to come and do a speech, we always make sure that we're deep. We're in the audience. That's so anytime you say something, my friend, we're yeah. going to be cheering. We're going to be roaring, you know, make it look like, you know, you winning. Even if you're losing, yeah. go ahead, brother. Go ahead. You know, you know, like that. So Khaled ripped him, man. He ripped him. He ripped him, bro. <laughs> wow. wow. And, and, the lady ran, and the lady ran out. She ran out screaming. It was two white people there. It was two white people there. Uh -huh. And he went to talk about all uh, the blue eyed Jesus and this and that and you know this crackers version, that crackers version, the other crackers version, and yada 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 talk about the Bible and the King James version and the, the New World Order version and the, the, the International Testament version, all these different versions of the Bible. White lady ran out, right? She went to screaming. And Carla said, Oh well, one down, one to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is a true story, bro. This is a true story. And, uh, yeah, but that's great to have that awareness as he's speaking, though. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, that's really a skill to actually see only two white people who want to walk out and say Khalid was special for me. He was like like when I was younger and and like uh, like, you know how you for me, uh, you delve into like contemporary and then you delve into like, man, I'm black and you delve into contemporary pussy money and all that stuff. Then you the next week you like Khalid, Khalid, you know, what I mean, yeah, 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 I, I knew Khalid Muhammad before I actually knew Farrakhan, believe it or not. Right, that's that. That's who I was more. Um, that's who I'm more identified with, mm -hmm. more so than Mr. Farrakhan. I looked at Mr. Farrakhan as as um a very holy brother. You know, a lot of us back then we looked at Farrakhan as being this holy brother, and and um, you know, this is this uh, this honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, back then we would listen to a lot of rap music like Paris. Anyone who used to listen to rap back then, Paris from um San Francisco, he 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 was pro black. Mm -hmm. Professor Griff. Mm -hmm. uh you know public enemy of course ice cube um that was the rap music the conscious error was heavily nation of islam five percent of influence mm -hmm. you know what i mean so that kind of like shaped my mind as a youth you know what i mean i had a lot of oh my god fred you have no idea brother i i i, I was probably my mother because my mother was racist as hell i learned racism from my mother mm -hmm. but that was because the experiences that she went through in life you know what I mean? She was born in 1944. So I just had so much hatred in my heart at that time for just white people, you know, the whole race of white people. You know what I mean? Because I was indoctrinated at a young age. And in the NOI, they teach you, you have to always keep fishing. Fishing means you keep recruiting, keep recruiting, keep recruiting. You know, it's like sales. You know, if you work in sales, um, you have to keep trying to bring customers in because if you bring 10 or 15 or 20 customers in, um, 10 may, no, if you bring 20 in, 10 may fall off, five may be kind of shaky, shaky, but you might have five strong ones that, sure. that that's going to fight, you know, financially take care of everything, you know, be the, be your strongest sales group. Mm -hmm. So nation, you got to keep fishing and it's always good to get the, the youth because the youth is very easy to manipulate. Mm -hmm. Me, I was a damn fool. Mm -hmm. I was very easy to manipulate. Very, very easy. When I say easy, like you say the word is done. You know what I mean? <laughs> but go ahead, but that's it. But uh, you know, uh, I'm glad I woke up out of that though. Uh speak on uh you said because I, I never heard this before, like then I didn't know chapters had to pay for like speakers to come. I oh yeah. yeah. So it's similar to like when when like a church in, in California says we want Dr. King to show up, they pay for them to come. Is it similar to that? Oh yes, sir, absolutely. Yeah. Um no, no high ranking official is coming to any city without being paid. Mm -hmm. And um, oh yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, brother. Cause um keep 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 me on track, Fred. Keep okay. me on track, please. Cause I got because about the way my mind operates, I'll be thinking ahead of time. So keep me on track. So back to Collett. When Collett came, when Collett came, he finished his speech. Um, the mosque in Sarasota that brought him in, uh he Collett had his term sheet, what he wanted. How much money he wanted to get paid so a lot of brothers a lot of those brothers in nation islam they didn't get their money like that they used to get part of the money mm -hmm. and then they're told okay we're gonna get part half now and then when we get here it's like an artist you know hey send me my um 
send me my um you know, my, my down payment up front, my advance up front. And then when I get there before I step on the stage, I want the rest of my money. Mm-hmm. Well, a lot of those brothers they used to work on consignment. They say, okay, well, you know, give me half now. Then when I get there, um, we'll pay you the rest of the money. So once Colin was there, he's supposed to got paid before he went on stage. But the mobs like, okay, Colin, we promise you we're gonna get you the rest of your money. So they went ahead and Colin did his speech, said what he had to say. They didn't have his money. So remember, I told you his brother named Captain, you know, Keith, Keith Muhammad. Uh, well, we was all exes then. We wasn't Muhammad's. We was exes. So brother Keith X, my captain, um, at the time, uh, and he was the, he was one of the biggest uh, drug dealers in, in the city at the time as well. Have to interject there, <laughs> and we all worked for him on the street. Mm-hmm. So, uh, <laughs> and we was we was a raised money crew. We raised money, Farrakhan. We had to send money to headquarters. Number two poor. But anyways, Khaled didn't get the rest of his money, so we had to cover down for that. So my captain was like, "Hey man," he was like, "Listen, brother, uh, Khaled didn't get the rest of his money. Um, he know I had some money because he was my supplier on the street. So he know <laughs> he know he know he know I had money because he was selling me work and the other brothers work as well." This 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 is a true story, and I have brothers who can vouch for me for this. So that's right now today. This is a true story. I'm not making this up. Um, so he was like, "Man, I need a thousand dollars from you." Call it short, five thousand dollars. So I gave him a thousand. No, actually, yeah, I gave him a thousand, and three other brothers came up with the rest of the money. And um, Keith, my my captain, he threw some money in with it, um, and he took it to college. Now we didn't take it to college. But he, this is the type of brother. This is the type of brother he was. He'll be like, because he, he wanted to be seen so bad in the nation, and he wanted he wanted to be high ranking official. He wanted to be known by Minister Farrakhan. So he did. He would have did any. He did everything he could to be seen and known. So um, he was one of those type of brothers. So he he took the money, rest of the money to Khaled. Was like, yeah, brother Khaled, I'm the one. I'm the one made this happen for you. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what happened. But even though he didn't come up with all the money, it came from us. <laughs> it came from a lot of the other brothers. But he was he was he would be the one that would be the one to give the money. Um, like I, let's say I give it to you, Fred, and then you take it to um, the DB or whoever it is, mm-hmm. and uh, DB thank it all, man. Fred, yeah, Fred came through for me. But it was really me and two other brothers. <laughs> yeah, so that's what happened. Gotcha. So when. You're, have you ever met uh, uh, Minister Farrakhan? No, sir. I never met him personally. Never met, have, but but you've heard him speak quite a few times in person. Yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um, I heard him speak in Miami uh, multiple times. Um, we I was on security detail in Chicago for him. I was in security detail in Atlanta in the nineties. Uh, I want to say like ninety three ish, ninety four ish. Uh, the Million Man March was in October ninety five. Right. Minister Farrakhan went on a uh, stop the uh, stop the killing tour. He had all the churches pretty much around America. Those black churches um, kind of helped make the make the Million Man March happen. To be honest with you, they really did. They played a vital role in it. A lot of people don't know that, but they played a vital role in it because Minister Farrakhan used to go to a lot of these churches and teach, and he taught out of the Bible. You know what I mean? He taught out of the Bible and the Nation of Islam. You know, we we learned a lot out of the Bible. We learned a lot out of the Bible. That's how we was taught, out of the Bible. You know, the Bible is considered the poison book. So if you want to resurrect your people, you got to go into the poison book, the book that they're familiar with, in order to raise them raise them out of the grave they're in or whatever. That's how we was taught anyways. Um, me, I wasn't a spiritual brother. I'm more of a uh, a soldier, street soldier. Whatever. I mean, y'all can have the spirituality stuff. When it's time to make something happen, let, when it's time to make a move, let me know. That's that's what that's that's pretty much what 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 that's pretty much what a lieutenant primary role is back in those days. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm just just being honest with you. You know what I mean? So um, I can't speak for anyone else, but I'm saying the way I was trained, the way I was groomed from all of the people who had a hand in, in teaching me from uh, 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 from uh, Rockman to B.R. to Brother Musain to. Captain Curtis, uh, to uh, brother, brother Mr. Van, to uh, Bernard Kushmir, aka Brother Jabril Muhammad out in Phoenix, Arizona. He's mm-hmm. more on the spiritual side. He's the writer. Um, that's how we were taught. You know what I mean? So, uh, what was the question again, Fred? Oh, have you met Minister Farrakhan? But oh no, sir, no, sir. I, have, I never met him, but I done security for him in Atlanta. Um, quite a few of the stop the killing tours by me being in the south. Anytime the minister came to the southern region, it was always encouraged. It was always promoted that brothers, um, 
come together. No, the southern region would be Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Tennessee, Texas. You know, we would well Texas pretty much like the Midwest. So, uh, but the southern region would be like the southeastern parts of the country. We'll come in and you know we we come and do the security. So, um, I, again, I I never met. Now nah, I'm not gonna lie. I had Mr. Farrakhan walk by me one time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> walk by me this whole security detail. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn, okay. We walked by me one time, but um, I never uh, I never personally met him, had a conversation with him, to be honest with you. Mm. Now, what was your take on um, Khalid Muhammad and Minister Farrakhan and Louis Farrakhan? Um, honestly, uh, I'm being as honest with you as I possibly can. I love Dr. Khalid and I love Minister Farrakhan because you know, uh, back then we used to watch a lot of VH, VHS tech, um, tapes yeah. of yeah. Minister Farrakhan, uh-huh. but the guy I was attracted to was Khalid uh-huh. because he was more my character, so to speak. You know, just just the way he taught, um, the physicality of his teaching, so to speak. Khalid was nothing to play with. He was very, very militant. Reminded me of my mom. My mom was very militant because she was a Black Panther. So my mom was in the Black Panthers, um, which indoctrinated me. And then, you know, that opened me up for the NOI. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was an easy transition. But um, I, I love Dr. Collett. And a lot of the younger brothers love Dr. Collett. When, uh, when Dr. Collett did a speech at King College, I think that was King College in Gainesville. Yep. And he said something that he said something that he's always said about, and I, you know, um, I, I don't want to get the video uh, struck, but you know what uh, I mean. Before you tell that story, I've never understood why he was annexed out of the uh, nation is on for that statement i really don't grasp it you know when i hear uh malcolm speak when i hear elijah muhammad speak when i hear i mean you go on down the list farrakhan speak it sounds pretty similar yeah very similar Mm -hmm. so basically basically minister farrakhan's justification for silencing dr collett for 90 days was and i remember this like it was yesterday he said although i agree with the truths that my brother Khaled spoke. He says it or something. Yeah. I disagree with the manner in which he spoke it. Now, the crazy part about that is Khaled spoke in the manner that he's always spoke mm-hmm. since the eighties, mm-hmm. all throughout the eighties and the nineties. He's always spoken that manner. Khaled didn't say anything different that he normally didn't say. So, um, but in the nation that we're taught to hear and obey, Minister Farrakhan is the leader. Um, if li- whatever Minister Farrakhan says, that's what it is. Um, uh, we, we are to follow orders. So if there's a brother who was, uh, good, like Dr. Collett and he, f- they, they would call it, he's not in good standings anymore. He's in bad standings. So in the nation back then, if a brother was in bad standings, no one in the nation can associate with that brother. Mm. So people who loved Collett. But once we found out that he was in bad standings, we had a decision to make. Farrakhan was the leader, not only the leader, but Farrakhan, you know, we believe that he was the right hand man to the messenger of Allah who stood alive on a spaceship, on the mothership, mm-hmm. you know, which is alive to Muhammad. But I, that's a whole nother story. I'll tell you about that. That's that's crazy within itself. But um, that's what it was. So, um, you know. A lot of brothers, some brothers was confused at that time, around that time when Dr. Carly got silenced. So we just said, okay, he got silenced 90 days. After 90 days, he'll be back. Sure. Uh, but it didn't materialize that way. So uh, why I don't why I heard a lot of why I heard a lot of different things, but I don't have firsthand information. Um, because I haven't talked to Minister Farrakhan myself, but a lot of the older ministers, like Minister Rockman, I had his number phone number. Uh, Minister B.R. down in Miami, Musain down in Miami, um, Captain uh, Anthony, which was the captain of, um, of the Miami Mars back then. Uh, you know, I, I had I had access to all of the elders. You know what I mean? So I would get information from them. Mm-hmm. And that's it. So but I, did I get it from Minister Farrakhan? No, I did. Mm. Yeah, that's always trivial to me. I, I've n- no matter how much I, I I try and make sense of it. He sounds just like. Malcolm, when he's talking about Jews, he sounds just like him, man, real similar. Except Malcolm used the word white, you know, or devil, you right? Know? Uh, but but you know what, I, I I did notice, and I don't know how much information you know about this, and uh, uh, but the uh, the Black Caucus 
came down on him as it pertains to that. And, and, and Senate representatives came down on him uh, and, and him being Louis Farrakhan, and they were going to strip him of those uh, uh, those contracts that you spoke of. Yeah, those government contracts. Yeah, those government contracts that you spoke of. It, it's actually in, uh, I, I got to get it. It's actually in some Senate readings. They were going to strip him of the uh, of of government funding, and then a year later, I mean, he he denounced him on TV. I think it was Barbara Walters or something like that. He had a exclusive. Right. And was that was that with Barbara Walters? I think it was it was either Barbara Walters or Phil Donahue. It was one of those. Yeah, one of them. One of them. Yeah, one, of, yeah. one of them. And and then a year later, because that was like ninety three, ninety four ish, right? Yep. Yes, and sir. And a year later, he had the Million Man March. The Million Man March would not have happened, I believe. Well, I mean, it's pretty easy. You could read the Senate minutes. It's, it's no, you're right. You're it's, right. It's, if if he had not denounced uh, Khalid yeah. Muhammad on that day, the October of ninety five would would have never happened. Yes, sir. I I, I totally I totally um mm-hmm. I didn't understand it then, but as I ended up like as you know, I I, I left the nation when I left the nation. Um, when I left the nation, uh, I started doing a whole lot of research and studying Mm -hmm. and, uh, those Senate, um, hearings that you was talking about, I realized that. Mm -hmm. And, um, I'm like, oh, okay. It was a lot of, you know, cause in the nation, I'm going to just be honest with you, man. It's like, um, everybody, like all of the fruit, we supposed to be like one monolithic group of people. We all supposed to think alike. Uh We all supposed to move alike. You know what I mean? So uh, a fruit is FOI, what they teach you. You hear and obey. Mm-hmm. You don't ask no questions. Whatever the leader tell you to do, or whether your subordinate, not just subordinate, but whatever your local leadership tell you to do, local ministers, you hear and obey. Mm-hmm. You don't ask no questions. You just follow orders, and that's what we did. So, but um, yeah, um, I didn't know that. I didn't know that, brother. You, it's a lot that you know. I didn't even know that, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, I've done a lot of research because I only want to speak in truth. You know what I mean? So when they come after me. You know, I got a few projects I'm working on. So when they come after me, I was like, choop, 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 choop. You know what I mean? Here's the artifacts. Here's the primary evidences. And and and, and, and it is what it is. And w- when did you start to raise eyebrows as it pertains to uh, um, um, questioning the nation of Islam? Or did it take time? Oh, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, okay. When you first joined the nation, you have to write a letter, write your letter to Chicago. It's a handwritten letter that you have to write that you have to copy verbatim. Now, this letter is supposed to be a in the handwriting of Elijah Muhammad um, for the laborers or something, something of that sort. Mm-hmm. And the closest you can get to, I guess it's kind of like a Shahada letter or whatever the case may be, as it relates to Islam. Sure. You know, because the nation of Islam has nothing to do with Islam at all. But that's a whole nother story. Um, it's something like that. Once, so once they accept your letter, then you get your X. That was I got my my letter passed March 12, 1992. It was one of the happiest days of my life. Mm-hmm. I thought I was a part of something special. Like, oh, well, 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 got, got my ex, boy. You know, I got my ex. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, then what was the question again, Fred? Oh, when did you know? Oh, OK. Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. You got to keep my point, Fred. Keep my point. Okay. Um, um, my letter passed 992. I started asking questions about uh, it didn't take long for it. be honest, it didn't take long. Um, probably like maybe five years, three, three, maybe like four years. It didn't take long because um, a lot of stuff was happening. Mm-hmm. Brothers was going to jail. Uh, brothers who used to do certain things to raise money. I just say that if you're a brother for around that time, you know, if you was taught by the first resurrection, um, the first resurrection, those brothers got it down. If you do any research, there was some, them brothers was, was serious. You know what I mean? They did what they had to do um, in order to raise money. So we admired those brothers so much because we was taught by them. So basically a lot of the older brothers of the nation, the ones who I came up around and the ones who was sharing that wisdom with me and taught me um, and taught the, helped, helped teach the brothers around us you know, we kind of got indoctrinated with that same militant go getter, go make it happen uh, mentality. Just don't bring shame to the nation. You know what I mean? So when brothers started going to jail, and then I started catching cases myself. And then I realized, wait a minute, man, I ain't got no, ain't no legal fund. There's no benefits. Uh, 
brothers going to jail and you know people ain't ain't looking out you know we making all these sacrifices but then when you get caught up in the jam is we holler at you mm. so that's when i started asking questions and i'm like wait a minute man this ain't you know this ain't making no sense to me you know what i mean because when when i was in the street fred we i don't know how it was where you from but on, on my block where i was from my neighborhood if a brother got caught up in the jam the brothers on the street, we would put money together. Okay, Fred locked up. Your mom will come around or your sister will come around. Fred locked up. Oh, yeah, what is bond is? We need to raise $10,000. Ten brothers will give, ten brothers are put together. Ten brothers will give your sister or your mom $1,000 a piece to go bond them out. And the NOI, it ain't none of that. You get caught in the jam, you're on your own. Just don't bring shame to the nation of Islam. You know what I mean? So, um, when that started going down, that's when I started asking questions. And I started feeling some type of way because, you know, in the NOI, they teach you that your word is your bond. Before you fail your word, you give your life. I took that very seriously. If I said I was going to do something, Fred, I did it. I took that to a T. You see what I'm saying? But the brothers that I had around me, them brothers didn't, they didn't, they didn't live by that same code. They preached that, but they didn't live by that same code. So I started noticing that. When I started noticing that, Fred, and I was tired of noticing them catching cases and other brothers catching cases and doing time and ain't nobody there for them and people moving on like, you know, the hell with you. You know what I mean? You know, we'll see you when you get out, brother, and all that stuff there. That's when I started asking a whole lot of questions. When I started asking critical questions, you know, my, my, my grandfather used to tell me, um, you know, brother, um, you know, you kind of pushing it a little bit, brother. Uh, you know, brother, you, 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 you know, you look like your faith getting kind of shaky. I'm like, no, nah, man, you know, I'm, I'm asking questions, bro. Like, you know, Brother Minister, you know, that's how I talk to my grandfather. I'm, I'm asking questions. This ain't adding up to me. You know, we don't did all these sacrifices and we ain't seen no benefit. I ain't seen no return, no nothing. I don't got beat out of money by Jabril Muhammad out there in Arizona. Hustled out of money from that brother. I don't got hustled out of money from this brother. And it was a lot of, the, it was these old cats from the first resurrection. And brother, this ain't adding up. You're like, what, what kind of, you know, you, your words supposed to be bond. You saying that you, you told me everything I wanted to hear in order to get my money. Say we want to help Mr. Farrakhan and we want to do this and do that. And then when you get our money, it, it's something totally different. This is what they don't tell you. You see what I'm saying? I'm just, listen, any brother in the nation right now, I know if especially if you're a young brother, I get it. Your job is to your job is to defend the teachings of the NOI. I get that. I understand it very well. I was in it 24 and a half years. Um, I was not active for 24 and a half years, but I still held on to the teachings. I still believed it, whatever the case may be. But um, I was active for like 10 and a half years strong. And then I just I just said, man, you know what? I'm not going to no more mosque anymore. I'm going to just listen to the leader, Minister Farrakhan. We called him the leader in the nation when I was in it. Um, I'm just going to listen to the leader. I'm not dealing with no more local leadership. That's when I started. That's when I started waking up. Mm. That's when I started asking questions. Mm. Now. Uh, you said that you caught cases. Did you actually do time? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> Me and a whole bunch of brothers. <laughs> oh, OK. OK. And, <laughs> and was there were, were all those brothers a part of your mosque or temple? Um, some of them were. Some of them were, but some of them wasn't. Um, some of them used to just come through periodically. Um, but like like my crew, because I had like 25 brothers like under me. At the time, I'm gonna send you a picture, bro. Where you can see everybody. You gonna be like, oh, okay. <laughs> you can see how young I was, but yeah, um, some some of us was because all of us came from the street. Mm. We, we, bro, bro. Basically, we were just some street dudes, bro. To be honest with you, we we're just some street guys. Of, of, we want, it was happy to be a part of a movement that we thought, well, uh, you know, that was good at the time. But then, you know, thanks to brothers like Ice Cube and Public Enemy and Chuck D and Paris and, uh, you know. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of that stuff was going on. You know, the, the rap music and stuff was very influential on us too. And you know, brothers like Dr. Khaled was teaching, and you know, Q was talking about Dr. Khaled Muhammad. If you listen to the Lethal Injection album, you know, stuff music like that played a big part on us. And new uh, Public Enemy, um, it not it takes a nation of millions to hold us back. Uh, it was another, you know, uh, ah, they made like three albums. You know, that just really, so it was, you know, the, the rap music and the nation was kind of like married together at that time, the conscious right. movement. So that helped it, helped influence us a lot. But um, yeah, we was, we were some go-getters, bro. We were some go-getters. If you ask anybody, if you talk to any elder about the first, 
about the first resurrection of the nation. Those brothers who were born in the twenties and thirties, you'll you'll hear some stories, bro. Like them brothers was was serious. Mm-hmm. Your brother was. Go ahead. Do you want to take any questions? Yeah, I can take any questions. Yeah, I'll take okay. Any questions. I'll uh, I'll open up the phone lines. Okay. And uh, so, how ask does me any that, question you want to ask? Me. <laughs> how does that work? How does the how does the the backwards movement go? Like now you're uh, not in like now you're you, you're you're now questioning the nation of Islam. How how does that work? Um. Well, it, it's kind of conflicting. It's kind of conflicting because. Um, the thing is, is in the nation, you know, you're taught just to hear and obey when I was in the nation. I don't, I don't know what's going on now. So I don't know what's going on now. I have no idea. I have, you know, I'm not, I know brothers who, a lot of the brothers who I knew that was in it, they Sunni Muslims now. They, they practice Orthodox Islam. They have nothing to do with the nation Islam anymore. They're done. A lot of those brothers left. You know what I mean? There's a couple that's still trying to hang on, but a lot of those a lot, of, a lot of those brothers left but um what's the question again fred uh w- what are some of the things that you did that if you guys want to call in i'm not sure if db want to call in but he's definitely more than welcome to call in what were uh uh some of the things that you started questioning like as it pertains to like oh if it's real or not yeah oh, okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah let, me, let me let me let me now i'm, now, now I'm fixing a rough with some feathers i'm finished fixing the rough with some feathers but it has i have to i have to do it um when I first came when I first came into the nation, um there was a picture. I got I got I got I gotta go ahead. Sorry about that. No, go ahead, go ahead. He will hold, he'll hold the caller hold. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So um I used to question like who is for who is this who is this white dude right here? Uh-huh. Well, my words was who is this cracker? Uh-huh. You know, because they had a picture of um uh, Farad Muhammad, which looked white, the white man. Um Elijah Muhammad and Farrakhan. That's supposed to represent the Trinity at the time. This 92, 93, 94 at the time. So we were so, you know, we was always taught that, you know, this is this is our law and the person of Master Farah Muhammad. Now I didn't I didn't study no um Orthodox Islam. I knew nothing about, you know, real Islam. I didn't know anything about that really. You know what I mean? You know, we was taught to stay away from that. Nation of Islam is is you know, this is our laws religion specifically put together for black people in America. And I just took it around with it and it sounded good and stuff like that. So that was but that was my first question. Then the second question was, you know, I just started asking questions about um just different things. Cause we was taught that, you know, the you know, uh lied to Muhammad, because I didn't really know nothing much a whole whole lot about a whole whole lot about um I didn't have no connection really to Elijah Muhammad like that, Fred, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? I used to listen to his speeches and stuff, but I couldn't get into him because it's like he had a speech impediment problem. Mm-hmm. I, I'm like, man, I'm like, who was, who was, who was, um, uh, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. But Farrakhan was a really good talker, very articulate, very charming. And you know, black people, we love articulation. If you can talk real good and, and, and able to articulate words. So I was more into Minister Farrakhan and then, of course, Dr. Khaled. Um, but we was taught that, you know, hey, man, America going to be destroyed. Uh, uh, America going to be destroyed. Uh, Elijah Muhammad, he, he's not dead. He didn't die in 1975. Contrary to what his family said, they the one buried, buried their father, perfumed the body, wrapped him up. Um, but Farrakhan, he got that from Brother Jabril Muhammad out in Arizona. That that was the one who put that in Mr. Farrakhan's head. Um but um, yeah, we were taught that Elijah Muhammad was alive on, alive on the spaceship, aka the mothership, and America was going to be destroyed. And I've been hearing this like every five years for <laughs> uh, from what 1990 to 95. Then the Million Man March, we thought it was going to be set off. Then that didn't happen. Then 2000 came, we thought it was going to be set off. Then and that didn't happen. And and next thing you know, you know, the white man's still here. Uh, America's still here. It hasn't been destroyed by no ships. Um, you know, uh, Elijah Muhammad is, uh, you know, I, I guess he's waiting on the right time to come back. You know, he's up there with uh, Farad Muhammad. And I would ask him all kind of questions. Like, man, I say, man, this ain't making no sense. I say, so let me get this straight. I say, everybody dies that I know of. I have family members that died for it. My mother passed away in 1999. She ain't coming back. My grandfather passed away. He ain't coming back. I've never known anyone to pass away and come back. 
but you're telling me that this one guy, Elijah Muhammad, he was able to escape death and he went to an undisclosed location and got beamed up on a spaceship. So I started asking questions about, okay, well, okay, let's say I'm going to run with this for a minute. You say that he's alive on a spaceship. Okay. How did he get out of the hospital? How did he get out of Mercy Hospital uh, from around all that security? Explain that to me. And I used to ask Jabril Muhammad this. I used to ask Rockman this. They would, could never explain it. They couldn't never explain it. Um, okay. Because he had to leave the hospital. You say he's not alive. You say he's alive. He's on a, on a spaceship, on sure. the mothership. Sure. How did he get out of the hospital? Mm-hmm. Who body that was that got buried? You see what I'm saying? None of these questions are being answered. It can be answered. None of them. So that's when I really started getting really, really, really suspicious. And then just a whole lot of contradictory stuff. And a lot of brothers you talk to about that, they'll deflect and go to something else. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. We, we got our first call. 727, what's up? Can you hear me good? Uh, yeah, go ahead. This is Bryce from last night. Oh, hey, what's up? Um, back to the beginning, um, Coach. Um, we were both kind of confused, but I think you got it. Um, did you say if there was a thousand newspapers and you sold all thousand, you'd get three hundred, or you get seven hundred? We get three hundred, and seven hundred has to go to headquarters in Chicago. Okay. It has to go to um, it has to go to the um, the headquarters. Headquarters would be. You know the, the Chicago main mosque, um, and then uh, we also used to have to every mosque had to pay the number two poor. Well, every member has to pay the number two poor. For guys who don't know what the number two poor is, that's money that goes directly to Farrakhan. Oh, so we have we have right. to send, we have to send ten percent of our earnings. I said we had a job working for the white man or whoever we worked for. Ten percent of that money has to go to Chicago. All 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 the believers have to send ten percent of your earnings. To headquarters on top of if you sell a final call newspaper on top of if there's any events like um savior's day if you can show up show up you're gonna have to give you know raise money you know to get to these places it it, it was it was um it's a lot but yes sir um you sell a thousand papers you you keep you keep 30 percent of the and 70 percent has to go go to chicago oh all right all right i got it now Yes, Pre- sir. Pre- is that it? That's all you got? Yeah. That's, all right. That's appreciate it. you. Thanks, Bryce. Thanks for tuning in two days in a row. Appreciate you. Oh, I'm going to tune in every night you're on. All right. Appreciate you. You know, you got a bedtime, man. You know that, right? 10 o'clock is your bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate you, Bryce. All right. My parents are already asleep. My brother's already asleep. I got it. All right. Appreciate you. <laughs> uh, he, he just found the channel last night, coincidentally, man. And uh, uh, he found it because of the Jake Paul. Uh, we did a review show uh, uh, last night. Yeah, yes, that's the question that that I have, and 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 people think that I'm that I'm on this witch hunt. I'm not on a witch hunt at all. It's it's just that when you're in search of the truth, it unfolds so much. You understand? Like like if you say the Million Man March, the government allowed Farrakhan to do the Million Man March, but if I if I show people the Senate minutes. They're going to say, oh, it's not real. It's not. They were going to strip him of all that money the government was getting and the contract to teach in in the prisons as well. Yes, sir. He's had a 20 year contract. I mean, now, I mean, uh, I mean, this century, they've had a contract with teaching and teaching Islam in 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 the in the prisons. Well, they get four hundred thousand dollars a year. It was two four hundred thousand dollars a year. No, no, you know, you, 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 you're you right, Nizak. Um, a lot of the, a lot of those ministers used to go into the prisons and teach um, the Nation of Islam doctrine. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to always get checked by, you know, you know, when I, when I was in the belly of the beast, you know, and, uh, you know, and stuff like that. When I was in the belly of the beast and the feds, you know, they, 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 you really learn the real Islam. Mm-hmm. You know, Nation of Islam and Orthodox Islam is two different things. Nation of Islam is more of a black nationalism nationalistic group you know what i mean um you know pretty much black nationalism is pretty much like an advocacy you know what i mean um you know or support for unity kind of like for um, like uh, political self um, determination for black people you know especially in the form of a of a separate black nation so when you listen to the just a pure definition of what black nationalism is and look at nation islam that's what it is mm. it's black nationalism that's all it is it has nothing to do with islam at all um it has it may take some things from Islam, like 
the, the five pillars of faith, you know, uh, say your prayers, but we don't even say the prayers right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the regular, like, no, like Islam does or the five pillars of faith. Mason of Islam, it, it, you know, they teach you, hey, man, there's no God but Allah. Muhammad is his messenger. But in the nation, you know, you're taught that, you know, there's no God but Allah who appeared in the personage of Master Farah Muhammad, the great Mahdi, as Minister Farrakhan would say, and the most honored Elijah Muhammad is Allah's last messenger. So if you if you profess with your tongue to believe that, meaning if you've been indoctrinated to believe that, and if you wake up late on down the line and realize that's a lie, and you was to think differently from that, then you will be considered a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know anything about Islam, and I've studied it uh, with the shout out to my um, my Sunni um, brothers, um, Orthodox Muslim brothers, um, the, the, the Quran. I read the Quran like 25, 30 times. And in the Quran, it teaches that, you know, uh, the hypocrite is one who one who believes that that professes that there's no God but Allah and Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, mm -hmm. not Elijah Muhammad, is his messenger. And you, you you profess that, but you but you but you don't believe that in your heart. That's a hypocrite. Um, it doesn't say that if you don't if you say you believe that um, Master Farah Muhammad, which is shirk, um, is, is Allah and the person of a man and Elijah Muhammad is, is the messenger if you say you believe that and then turn around and don't believe it, you're a hypocrite the Quran don't say that, mm -hmm. but the nation of Islam teaches that, it's like they conflict the two um, and if you are a young naive brother like myself and a lot of the other brothers who I came up around and you're not studious and you just take go by what these elders teach you because a lot of those elders indoctrinated us into this stuff, to be honest with you, go ahead brother yeah. Yeah, because when I look at the nation of Islam, I see it as more of like life coach lessons. Like I don't see it as a religion. I, I see like like uh like like how you eat, how you should dress, how you how you manage your well being, your the, the upkeeping of, of your physical self. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, creating a nation within your community where you support one another and and from business. You know, from creating commerce and stuff like that. Right. That's that's, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's not the wrong yeah. that. That's, that's yeah. black nationalism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, um, we got another call. We got another two hundred two. What's up? Yeah, I wanted to ask the brother. Uh, what what has Orthodox Islam ever done for the black community? Um, what do you mean? What has Orthodox Islam ever did for the black community? In what aspect? Because I see, I see you speaking on the different, you know, different Islam with the nation and. You know, the Orthodox Sunni Islam, and I wanted to ask you, what has Sunni Islam, Orthodox Islam, ever done for the black community as far as resurrecting the black man or black woman? Um, as it relates to the resurrecting the black man or black woman, um, the Orthodox Islam has not done anything in that aspect. Um, Islam, if, if, if you choose to go that route with Orthodox Islam or whatever, um, you know, I think it's for the individual. If if that's your faith and that's what you want to believe in and you, you study, then what it does for you on a personal note, that's what it does for you on a personal note. Now, as it relates to a specific teaching that's designed to resurrect the black man and woman in America, um, that's more black black nationalism. Then I think the nation of Islam would probably um, be more in line with that, you know, if that's what you're referring to. But um as it relates to your question, Orthodox, you know, Orthodox Islam, what has they done specifically for black people in America as a whole? Um, I would say uh, nothing that I know of. But, you know, you that again, uh, it's a choice. Like whatever you choose, whatever path you choose to go down, if you choose to, um, you know, help better yourself, uh, whatever path you choose to go down, brother, that's, that's what path you choose to go down as it relates to that. But to answer your question, Orthodox Islam doesn't hasn't done anything specifically um, for black people in America as a whole. To answer your question. Yeah, yeah, because I, I mean, me, me myself always looked at the nation as uh, probably one of the best organizations in America, as far as uplifting uh, black men and women in America, and the uh, Orthodox Islam being more of a cultural Arabic. Arabic type cultural type thing, you know what I mean? I, I feel like the nation has been one of the better organizations for our people in in America, as far as waking us up. That's yeah. you know, that's my opinion, though. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. And um, and and, and to and to the interject on that, 
if that's the way you feel, brother, and that's how you feel, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not here to deter anyone from joining the Nation of Islam. You have to do, you have to figure out what's what's best for you. And if you feel like the nation is what's best for you, that's the path you should go down. If you feel like um, the church is what's best for you, that's the path you should go down. It's all subjective. You see what I'm saying? I can't sit here and tell right. you what's the right way, what's the wrong way. I can just tell you, hey, man, this is my experience. This is what I went through. Uh, it didn't work for me. I lost I lost going that way. I got used and abused going right. that way. I did time going that way. You know, I got manipulated going that way. I'm not saying that'll happen to you. I'm just saying that a lot of the brothers who I came up around, that's what happened to us. And a lot of brothers who came before me in the first resurrection, from the brothers who taught me, from Rahman to uh, Musain to uh, uh, Jabril Muhammad, well, not Jabril, but um, a lot of those brothers in the street, brothers in the first resurrection, the brothers who were born in the 30s and 40s, and I was, I'm 47. You know what I mean? Those brothers told right, me some serious stories. Them brothers told me some real serious stories, and um, um, I could just, you know, I, I could tell you that, um, um, you know, whatever path you choose to go down, my brother, just keep your eyes open. You know, don't be afraid to ask questions. Just keep your eyes open. That's all I can say to you. Okay, thank you, brother. Yes, Appreciate sir. Uh, being able to talk to you, my brother. Yes, sir. You too. Appreciate you. All right, well, I'm gonna go to the B mans. We got a couple B mans, and then we'll uh, get to the calls again. Go ahead, Kyle. What's up? Kyle. Kyle. All right, we'll come back to Kyle. Khalik, Master Khalik. Yes, Go ahead. sir. Can I be heard? Yeah, very much so. All right, how you doing, bro? I'm doing good, brother. How about you, right. Peace to the host and peace to you, brother. Um, where I come from, man, I you know, I I hear what you're saying. I hear all the I I hear all the problems that you have with the with the nation and all that. But what I want to explain to you is this. Master Farad Muhammad came and taught us that the black man is God in the 1930s, where we was Jim Crow, fresh out of slavery. Everything was, um, we was dis we was completely disenfranchised. He claimed he came and taught us that the black man is God. Get up and do for self. Nobody has ever came and taught us that. Nobody. These teachings changed my life completely. We, everybody can accept those teachings, okay? Because we 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 live in a in in a religious state of mind, so we have to be able to take these lessons and take the good from the lessons. It, it's up to the people to to fall in love with the religious aspect of it, but that's because you taking a, you know, you you going out the uh, out the uh, frying pan into the pot. You know what I'm saying? So it's up to us to take the the lessons and internalize those. Of course, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the most Honorable Elijah Muhammad came and taught religion because he was a, he was a religious person. But if you deal with the lessons, man, it, it, it's all about how you internalize it. It's not religious. He came and taught us that the black man is God, man. There's no there's no other teaching on earth ever that's been that powerful. For somebody to teach you that you got, that you got to get up and you got to go and do this, nobody's going to do it for you. Those are the lessons that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us from, from his teacher, W.D. Farad. So, so you know, if, if people get caught up in the religious aspect on it, that's them. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he was a religious man, but he was a builder. You can't take nothing from the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. It hasn't been a black man in our history that showed and proved like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. He showed and proved it. And he built nations from that. I come from, I come under the teachers of the 5% nation from my, fa from my father, Allah, who manifested, he was the first to manifest that he was Allah. W.D. Farrar didn't come and say he was Allah. He came and said, I'm your, uh, I'm your brother. In our lessons, it's, it teaches that he's the prophet. So, 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 W.D. Farrar didn't come to us and lie to us. He came and said, I'm your brother. Matter of fact, he called the black man his uncle. He said, my uncle was brought over here 379 years ago from the traitor, 
the slave trader. I'm very, he never brother. called himself God. He but never very, called himself God. So if people get caught up in the, in, in, in what it, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught, that's on them because they didn't they didn't get the message. They didn't they don't know the lessons. But in the five percent nation of God's earth, we know the lessons. He said that my uncle was brought over here. We the gods, man. He came and taught us that we 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 never heard nothing like that before. We didn't even know that we was the original people of the planet Earth. Until until W. D. Farrar come come came and taught us that. We can't throw him away. We can't throw the most honorable Elijah Muhammad away. Yeah, religion. I'm not about religion. I don't do religion. I internalize the lessons, God. And he said that the black man is God. You never heard a teaching like that till this day. Until this day, you've never heard a teaching like that. That the black man is God. You God. You need to get up and do for self. That's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us. You want to let us go ahead. Because you're going to you'll be repetitive. Not being disrespectful, but indeed. Uh, indeed. Yeah, I appreciate you, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, so uh, what I was saying was everything you, you're repeating, brother, is everything that I was taught in the Nation of Islam. So I know exactly where you're coming from with the lessons. I'm very familiar with the English C lessons. I'm very familiar with the general orders. I'm very familiar with the strict laws. I'm very familiar and well, well versed with the teachers of um, Elijah Muhammad. Trust me. I understand everything about uh, Master Farad Muhammad, the man who um, um, Elijah Muhammad said who taught him. Elijah Muhammad said that Farad Muhammad was God in the person. This is what Elijah Muhammad said. I have all of the lessons, every last one of them to this day. I Pardon me one second, God. Do you remember? Do, do you understand what that means when he said this was God in person? Do you understand what that means? Or, or, or well, matter of fact, pardon me. What's your understanding of what that means? Well, basically, uh, my understanding at the time was, you know, okay, this is all. This is this is God that's walking amongst us in the flesh, as though the Christians believe that Jesus. Well, I don't want to say that. I don't want to generalize all Christians. And I don't want to generalize everybody in the nation of Islam, but I would just say for me, the way I internalized that was, you know, this is our law and the person of a man. This is how I was taught. This is God who walked amongst us. And what we was taught was Farah Muhammad came and he taught Elijah Muhammad for three and a half years. This is what Elijah Muhammad said. This is what he said. out of his, This is what he said. Now, he said that uh, according to his words, um, that you know, Farah Muhammad taught him for three and a half years can't sleep to can't sleep in the morning to can't sleep at night. I'm um, taught him even he was sleeping. I, I know all of the lessons, brother. Trust me. So, <laughs> so, so can I say this real quick, brother? Go ahead. I contribute that to your misunderstanding because WD Farrar never came and said he was none of the things that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said he was. You're right but, about that. I'm not disagreeing so, so, with that. So, so he never came and said he was these things. Now, for me, God. What I see when he, when the most honorable Elijah said, "This is a law in the person," you you got to look at the phrase. This is a law in the person. This is God in the person. He's coming up. He's this is a God coming to teach us that the black man is God. That's what, what does that came. mean? What, 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 what does that came. mean, brother? Look, what does okay. what does God in the person mean? mean? What that Te means teach me. Is, Maybe you can teach me something. Okay. What that means is, who is the original man? The original man is the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, father of civilization, God of the universe. Says who? That was the question from W.D. Farrar to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And it, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad uh, answered that question based on the knowledge that he got from W.D. Farrar. So W.D. Farrar never came and said he was God. He came and said that the black man is God. So we can't get caught up on the most honorable Elijah Muhammad's religious beliefs. We need to look at the lessons. What does so, the lessons tell us? Uh, the uh, lessons uh, tell us that the black man is God. The lessons don't say nothing about W.D. Farrar being God. It says that God is W.D. Farrar's uncle. Brother, I, I, brother, listen, you preach it to the choir. I understand exactly what you're saying. You, you, you me, I, I, don't, I, I think you think that I'm, I'm um, I guess, trying to bash the nation or whatever. I'm not. I'm just stating what I was taught, what I learned. I'm just trying to show you the contradictions in it. But it's about what you understand, God. I, I, I understand, I, yes, sir. I understand that, brother. So all I'm saying is you said that the nation of Islam um, gave life. It saved your life. I think something, something I of said, that sort. Yeah, yeah, I, I, said, I said the teachings from yes, W.D. Farad to the most honorable Elijah Muhammad saved my life. 
How old but are you, brother? I understood that the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad was a religious man. He was raised by a, by a pastor. His father was a pastor. He, you know, he right. was raised in the Bible. Like he, yeah, he was, was raised with these with, with these religious beliefs. So it's not far fetched that he would have would still hold on to these beliefs. But he met a man. He met a man that helped him build a nation. Right, right, brother. I, I get, I get exactly. What I'm, trust me, I know exactly. Can I ask how old are you, brother? I'm forty two. All right, you you like you five years younger than me. Um, again, it's all subjective. It's all subjective. If the teachings of the nation of Islam has done wonders for you, then I'm happy for you, brother. That's you need to stay with the nation of Islam until until you uh, to the end of time. If that's what works for you, continue to work with it. Well, well, just, I mean, just to give you a a, a real quick. Uh, breakdown. No, I don't believe in the religious teachings of the nation of Islam. Me and my, like I told you, I come from the 5% nation of gods and earths. Yes, but I come, I mean, you know, we come from the nation of Islam. Like everything we know come from those lessons. Yeah, so class 13 that started, grow, um, I, he was I in the nation. Grow, class 13 next is in the nation of Islam. He started the 5%. Spinners. No, no, no. You, you, you missing what I'm saying. You missing what I'm saying. When I, when I first got the knowledge, it came from the nation of Islam. Okay. And I couldn't um, and I was going through what you're going through because I'm hearing, you know, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad say that this man is God and, you know, but, but I, I, I stayed fast to the lessons and I studied the lessons, right? you know, and I see that W.D. Farrar never said he was God. I don't care about what the most honorable Elijah Muhammad believed or any of that. He gave us the lessons, man, for us to figure it out on our set, on, on our own, for us to figure I it out for ourselves. So, yes, sir. I, t I totally, I totally agree with that, brother. I'm not, I'm not right. disagreeing with you. I'm not that's disagreeing right. with you at all. I'm just saying that your understanding and, and understanding of the lessons and what's being taught is conflicting. That's all I'm saying. I'm not. Um, and I, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you on that because um, the, the the nation of Islam has a very, very religious aspect, and it almost, you know, uh, can confide with. Um, with with Christianity and stuff like that, like they like it's a lot of brothers in the nation that actually believe, you know, that some mothership is gonna come save us and all of that. And and I, you know, I was I, one I of them. That. I, I was it. one but of if them. We stayed, if, if, if we stayed fast to the to the teachings. That's what I'm saying, brother. If if if, if we study the teachings, if we all had the teachings, and that's why the Father, Allah, the first person to claim he was Allah, since the teachings even came. If we stayed fast to the understanding of that man and the understanding of the lessons, then we we we, we won't fall victim to any of that um any of that spooky stuff. Cause all that spooky, the mothership and all that, that's spooky stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I don't deal with none of that. Yeah, that's you know what I'm saying. There's a lot of stay fast to the lessons, man. If we stay fast to the lessons, man, come on, man. Nobody in America ever knew that the black man was the original man until the the W.D. Farrar brought it, and then science backed it up. What science? B biological science. Okay. All right. Okay, yeah. brother. Yeah, biological science backed that up, that the black man is the original man of the planet Earth. and and But the first time we ever heard that came from W.D. Farrar. Okay. You know, so I think what I think is, brother, we need to stop getting caught up in the messenger and let's study the message. Let's study the lessons. Let's not get caught up in the man. Now, we, now I love the messenger. I'm going to tell you right now. I, I'm not going to go for any disrespect of the messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I, I'm not going to go for no disrespect of the honorable minister of Farrakhan, even though I don't agree with everything they teach. Because, But, but I understand that they are, are, they are religious people. You understand? But the, these are my forefathers. But they might have their own religious belief. But if we study the lessons, man, if we study the lessons, we will understand what W.D. Farrar brought. Yes, sir, I understand. I understand your point, your, your, your point, brother. I really do. I'm not in the nation anymore. So I'm, that's that's the packed away in the box. So so, uh, so 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 do you still understand that the black man is the original man? Brother, I'm not. Brother, I don't believe none of that stuff. I'm just so, being honest so, with you. So, so who's the first man on the planet, brother? Brother, I'm not even here to even, even here to have that discussion with you, sir. All I'm saying is it's very subjective. So you that's, don't know if, that, if that's no, sir. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is so, this oh, here. But I'm, I'm not asking you a specific question, brother. Who is the first people on the planet Earth? Brother, I have no idea. 
okay. he answered. He said he don't know. He says no idea. I have no <laughs> idea, know. brother. I know. I know what was taught from the nation of Islam. That's their teaching. Well, I forget the that. nation of Islam. Let's deal with science. Do okay. You know, well, do you know biological science? Yes, I know biological science, but the science okay. that you that you have seen, that you say that you know that for a fact, who is the original people? That's the science that you saw. I haven't seen that science, so I can't speak on that or so bear witness to anything. So you don't know. So you don't know where Homo sapiens sapiens started at. Um, you don't no, know sir. where Homo erectus started at. You don't know where. Uh, 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 you don't know where Australopithecus man was found. Like you don't know about the, the Naledi people. Like you you don't know any of this. Sir, um, brother, I've I've heard a lot of that stuff. Listening to my brother Unk from the Armor Rock Squad talking oh, about that's him and my stuff man. like that. That's but um, man. you know, those brothers they're real sharp through the you know, those brothers they're real sharp. But if you and you ask me, do I know personally? Have I studied it and done research nah, myself? Not, that's not what I'm no. asking you, brother. I'm asking no. you about your knowledge. Like what like well, my, 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 my knowledge, knowledge goes, my, my I'm knowledge not asking you, are you a I'm not hear me out. are you a uh, well, hear, uh, hear me out, brother? Hear me out. My okay. knowledge will my knowledge will come from what I have studied on my own. If okay. I haven't done the research on my own, now once I do the research myself, and then I come to that conclusion, then I can speak upon that as, as I can speak in the know because I've done the research myself. I've well, heard God, other I, only ask, I, I only ask you the extent of your knowledge. You you can't tell me the extent of your knowledge. Got one more question. One more question. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll, yeah, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. So you okay? The, 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 the summarize your question, brother, um, about who's the original man. Um, I have no idea. Okay. That answer your question. Hey, that's peace, man. And I appreciate you, man, for letting me call in and giving oh, me this uh, time. Oh, and I appreciate sir. talking to you too, brother. Appreciate yes, it. Kyle, you ready? Peace. Like you can hear me. I'm giving you the heads up though. Appreciate you calling. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, for sir. Take it easy, brother. All right. Kyle, you ready? Kyle ain't ready, man. I'm gonna have to beam him out. I think his thing is broken. He might be having an issue with his um his phone line. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. His he, line, um, Fred. I'll open up the phone lines again too if they want to. Fred, Fred, I'm um, I can I can give you about ten more minutes. I, oh, you got I, it. I, I get I get ten more minutes, brother. Definitely. Okay. Um, okay. you know, I'm, I'm gonna call you anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I I just think that people are so afraid to go outside their boundaries. And I'll tell you my story. I was raised in the church. My pastor ran off with the pianist. My pastor was married to my aunt, my biological aunt ran off with the pianist. And I'm like, and I got like 18, 19 years old. And then you think back, I'm like, hold the fuck up. My pastor ran off with the pianist and he was preaching God every night. Gee, we had, the, you know, you had evangelist. I mean, those, whatever you have, Bible study, all that, man. I'm like, hold up. These are, these are mortal men. These are mortal men that we're placing in God like, and God like, Ain't no man God. And, and people are so afraid. People are so afraid to say this person's wrong. This person is right because they taught them a life lesson. Right. That baffles me. That baffles the hell out of me. That baffles that people can say I'm wrong in the barbershop, but you can't say Farrakhan is wrong in the temple. I don't understand that. I don't. That's beyond my own understanding. I, I, I think we're all mortal. I think we're. I, I think uh, you take what's good out of Frederick, you take what's good out of you, you take what's good out of AP Trader, the Majestic, and that's how you create your moral compass to, to get through this thing called life. I don't think, me personally, this is me, I don't think there's one quote-unquote religion. I, I, don't, I, I don't believe that. I, I, I think God can take, God is like water. He can take on any form. He can take on any shape. You know, what I mean, God is what decision you're going to make in that moment. That's God. God ain't this esoteric construct to me. Right, right. Not right. And, and I and, and um, I totally see exactly where you're coming from. And I totally line up with that myself. Mm -hmm. What I tell people is this. It's three things I don't I don't discuss, especially with black people. Mm -hmm. Me being black myself, because mm -hmm. I know how crazy I was. Mm -hmm. Sports, politics and religion. You notice when I you know, when I talk to someone. The brother called in. I'm always going to start to stay calm because I understand. I heard his passion in his voice. He remind me of me. <laughs> he really reminds me of me when I was younger. Uh, he reminded me of me 20 years ago, 25 years ago. You know what I mean? He reminds me a lot of me. And I understand his passion. Well, again, I always say it's all subjective. Mm -hmm. I, again, I, I want everybody to hear this. It's all subjective. If this is the way you feel, 
about a certain subject matter or a topic or religion, then if that's what's working for you, that's what worked for you. Right. Your job is not to try to convince me on what you believe. Your job is to take what you believe, use that to change your life, to better your life, to take to help take care of you and your family. If those teachings from Farah Muhammad or Elijah Muhammad or whatever Muhammad, if those teachings help change your life and then help make you for the make your life for the better, man, r- 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 what do you five percent or NOI, uh, Al Islam, uh, Sunni Muslim, whatever, r- roll with it till the wheels fall off. It's not for me. I've been there, done that. And there's nothing that no one can say that's going to change my mind. And there's nothing that I'm going to say that's going to change your mind. If, if that's what worked for you, that's what worked for you. It's all subjective. Mm-hmm. I, We're not, I, go ahead. No, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Like, I, I don't think Christianity is perfect. I don't, a man has to see people go to church and expect a man or woman to be God for three hours. Th- that's what they say. They, they sit there and they look up at him. Oh, he's perfect. He's saying nothing but the truth. So they think like that's their life. They think like after church, they're God Monday through Saturday. <laughs> they do like they do. They think that about Farrakhan. They do. They think that about uh, Pastor Blake. They think that you can go to any religion, any uh, imam. You can you can any religion. They say, oh, man, this guy is perfect, man. He can't do no wrong. But if he lies, oh, no, see what you so we see what you mean, brother. You could. If I say Minister Williams out of Missionary Baptist Church, see see what he meant to say, brother, was this. Or you can say it about members of the nation. Well, what he meant to say was this. Huh? Right, right. No, the truth <laughs> is the truth. I don't care what religion. If you, you can bring up, people think I'm, 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 I'm anti-nation of Islam. No, what I am for is the truth. And the truth is that it's all, and, and because of my research on, on what I've done on Malcolm X, it leads people to believe that this is a this is like the rubric for like a black existence in america i don't believe that i don't be, i don't believe that because if that were true they would have had a nation by now if that were true in my humble opinion i would have given up my mansion bought 2000 acres in the middle of america and built the nation the goal ain't to build a nation. The goal is to remain a leader. That's right. the that's the that's the goal. Because I don't see I don't see no no harvesting going on. It's cheaper to live in the middle of America than it is to live in these big cities. Yeah, you're right about that. I can go to Georgia right now and get a thousand acres for for less than four hundred thousand dollars. And I and we sitting there doing it. We we just keep on recycling the thing. In a church, you go to a church. A pastor wants to remain a leader. Don't you know in America, the church? Do your homework. I I, I don't have the statistics on me. It is the most underutilized building in America. The church. The church is the most underutilized building in America. They don't open Monday. They don't open Tuesday. They don't open Wednesday. They open up Saturday for a choir rehearsal, maybe Wednesday for Bible study for three hours and four hours on Sunday. (laughs) Hey, hey, hey. Go ahead. ahead. Now, now, Fred, when I I was growing up, this is one part of aspect I forgot to tell you. When I was growing up as a little kid, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I grew up in the church. I was baptized twice. Mm-hmm. Even though my mother, even though my mother was a black woman. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, hey, listen, Fred, uh-huh. I was baptized in the baptism pool, and then I was baptized in the river. Uh-huh. You see what I'm saying? Because my my aunt, my aunt May, she's still alive right now today. She's 85. Mm-hmm. She uh, she's very religious. And we we was in church like five days a week. I I ran away from that. When I got old enough, I was done. I'm churched out. You know what I mean? So, but I, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Um, I, I do, I do understand, Fred, that um, especially when it comes to black people, us as black people, we get very emotional. I, I remember, I, I told, you I was very militant, mm-hmm. I was very aggressive, I was serious about these teachings and what I was taught from the ministers who taught and trained me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a little bit more calmer now because I don't evolved. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to convince anyone of anything. Whatever works for you, whatever floats your boat, whatever you think of me or Fred or whatever, continue to think that. You know what I mean? 
Um, just do what you got to do to help be, take care of you and your family and change your life. If that's what right. works for you, so be it. Right. It's, it's subjective, guys. It's, it's all subjective. I'm not here to convince you of anything. Mm-hmm. Do whatever you feel like you need to do. Right. Whatever you want to believe in, believe in it. I don't care. You know what I mean? Just, you know, that's all I got to say about it. TT says, Fred, it may not be fear, but respect for someone's belief to not challenge or question them about it. I don't. I, 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 I just lay the truth and say, that's it. Ask him, is he black first? Yeah, of course I'm black. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, of course I'm black. Yeah, but here's the analogy I I'll say, and and I'll let you leave your closing remarks, man. Uh, Joe Biden says if you don't vote vote for me, you're not black, right? America went crazy, but but they justified it. You know what they said? Trump is racist. Yeah. Right. Right. That's America. Nine out of ten black people voted for Biden. I don't grasp that concept. A white man, here's, a, here's I'm gonna draw a connection. A white man says, if you don't vote for me, you're not black, right? Yes, sir. And then you go to W. D. Ma- Farad, Farad Muhammad. He says, I'm gonna teach black people how to be black. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. Come on, come on, man. I I, I don't subscribe to that. I don't subscribe <laughs> to a, a non-black man telling me how to be black. <laughs> Because if you say it, because if you say it in 2021 and say Bill Clinton is teaching me how to be black, oh, what the hell are you saying? And then you see, so ain't no non-black man gonna teach you how to be black. That that's that's just a fact. Because if you change the name, if you ask any person, any black person, and says, can a can a non-black person teach you how to be black? Hell no. Nah. Fuck you, mean. Ha 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 ha. But you say W.D. Farad, oh, he taught me how to be black. You got to study the teachings. You know, so I I, I, I I just lean on practicality and common sense every day of my life. And um, and I'm going I'm to let you say your closing remarks, man. I, I genuinely appreciate you coming in, man. And uh, uh, you got to come back because uh, we can expand this conversation instead of just talk about like life and religion, because I think you have a great vernacular. You know what um, I mean? Oh, uh, Fred, let me tell you something, brother, and, and everybody in the, in the in the chat. I'm I'm so honored to have talked to this brother, Fred, mm-hmm. and I mean that because I I, I have a um a newfound um, respect for this brother. He, he's a very very smart guy. He does his own research, and he's an independent thinker. It, it, you're not going to find too many. Now, of course, the type of person Fred is is probably unpopular because you're not. Uh, you know, we're not a monolithic group of people. We don't all think the same. We don't move alike. You know what I mean? We're all in, individuals. So um, I've learned to become, to challenge everything. I've learned to become more independent in my thinking and do research. I've, I've learned a lot of that from my grandfather, even in the nation of Islam. So to this day, I do a lot of research. But in doing research, I have to look at stuff that may not agree with what I believe in. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I found in doing that, that's where I was able to find the truth. Mm-hmm. I'm saying for me, for me, whatever path that you you go down, if that's the path you feel like you need to be on, stay on that path. I'm not here to convince anyone of anything. I'm saying for me, for me and my household, my family, I'm going to do what works for me. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And you have to do what works for you. And that's it. And um, I love I love this brother Fred, man. I, I'm gonna do everything in my power because I have family in LA, live in South oh, Central. Yeah, be- yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do everything in my power, man, to come out there and see you. Um, you. um I, I mean that, man. Like it's when you find good people, I cherish good people in relationships. That's how I am. You know what I mean? So, um, so I really value this brother. I really love this brother. I just met and just met him, and man, um, I, I'm just honored to be here on this panel talking to this brother. Period. Mm-hmm. So I have a great deal of respect for you, Fred. And um, other than that, that's it, man. I'm not trying to change anybody's religion. If you NOI, stay I'm NOI not. till you die. Sell right. all the newspapers. Um, I hope you build your nation. Um, I hope that um, you did better than the brothers who came up with me did. Maybe y'all can turn it around or whatever. Um, you know, other than that, that's it, man. More power to you. Yeah, amen. I, I, you're right. I, I'm not here to say don't join the nation. Don't be Christian. Don't be Muslim. Don't be Islam. Don't be... I'm just going to tell you the truth and what I believe is the truth. And based off of my research, I don't speak to, I don't tell, I don't want to extend the conversation. I appreciate you. I know you got to go. I appreciate you. Coming. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I get you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, because, because I don't say nothing without knowing, 
You understand what I'm saying? I don't do I, I, I do my best. Right. To say everything that I say, well, is from this situation. It's from it's from this. I, I can validate that. I can with what the primary evidence is. You know, I, I don't believe in opinion. You know, I have an opinion, right. but w- when we're having conversations about about what I believe to be the truth in my research, I substantiate it with the truth. And and because Malcolm is like one of my life heroes, you know, in addition to my grandfather, you know, I I just I, I tell the truth on what I know to be true. And everything that I say is in their voice. I've never presented anything without their voice. Right. So, for example, so, for example, and, and since you talk about that, the, the wheel, right, the wheel. Right, right. The wheel, the mothership. Yeah, that kind of fascinated me because my aunt was the same way about Christianity. We're going to get caught up in a rapture and we're going to be die and we're going to come back and we're going to go on a rapture and we're going to go up in heaven and we're going to do this. I'm like, huh? That don't make sense to me. I went to a, I'd, I'd have been to a hundred funerals. You, you nobody know, never I mean? came back. If nobody ever came back. I'm <laughs> waiting on my, when, if my grandfather come back before I die, I will recant everything I've ever said. I will pray. I will, I will give up 20 years of my life to have these last 10 years of my grandfather again. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So, so, so the point I'm making is this, the wheel, right? Uh, Farrakhan says, oh, he saw, he saw, uh, since he saw Elijah Muhammad on a wheel, he's alive, right? Right. And then five years prior to that, he said he kissed him on the forehead at the funeral. So I'm baffled when, 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 because I I have a lot of conversations with the nation of Islam because that they are part of my life because I, you know, I see them all the time, the same people every time on Crenshaw Boulevard, right? This so, is stuff you're talking about. I, I have the video tapes. Yeah, yeah, the video tapes. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm sitting there like he, he's Farrakhan said he kissed a man on the forehead at the funeral, and he and he and he looked 25 years younger. He was at peace, and I told him what he said, whatever he said to him. And then when he wanted to start the nation, he said he's alive. I says, this is unreal. This that came is, from, that, that came from Jabril Muhammad. Jabril Muhammad. Yep, yeah, out in Arizona. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. His, his birth name is Bernard Kushmir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so when I present these things, people say I'm, I'm, I'm trying to bring down a nation. No, I'm trying to tell you not to be a follower, right. not to be a follower of second and third, fourth hand information. Right. Get to the core of the truth. Right. Uh, unfortunately, people like people. A lot of people like to be followed. They like to be led. They need yeah. leaders. You know what I mean. Right. So right. I, I understand that. I get it because I was once that way. You know what I mean. So. That's just what it is, Fred. I mean, um, uh, you know, it's all subjective, man. If that's what they feel like they need, then so be it. Like, I see a brother in the chat saying that, um, you know, the nation is the best thing that ever happened for our people. That's your opinion. Mm -hmm. And if that's the way you feel, brother, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I mean, I I mean, see, see, that's, see, and we we got one more beaming. You want to take this one more beaming? Yes, sir. Okay, cool. What's up?